This is Design Safe Radio, where natural hazards researchers strive to make our society more resilient to everything nature throws at us. Wind engineering in general, it's it's kind of a dark horse among engineering specialties. Like I, you know, I went to the University of Illinois. I had no idea that even existed as a mechanical engineering student. Like it wasn't even until I started working at Nary, I'm like, wait, wind engineering is a thing? <laughs> if I had not, I might have stayed there. Uh, you know, so what do you think like an engineering undergrad should know about? Uh, so it's a rich and exciting field with lots of history and depth uh, that that might encourage them to to become a wind engineer instead of uh, you know going to work for some big tech company or working in defense or automotive or the other kinds of things that mechanical engineers tend to think about as their options. Yeah, I, I I think you're right. I mean, I think even even civil structural engineers that that come through here, even even with the master's degree, they've never been exposed to wind engineering. They don't know exactly what it is, and so I think that's a real challenge to continue to grow the field. Right? I, I think people like people in academia, we have some responsibility to kind of continue on the legacy of wind engineering, produce students who are become eventual either academics or practitioners that know about the topic. And, you know, I, I usually say to people in undergrads, maybe a little tricky, but I think to it's a it's a young field, right? Uh, it's 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 relatively new per se. There's a lot of discoveries going on. There's a lot of things that we don't know. And, you know, to try to excite like undergraduates. I mean, I, I think, you know, wind, wind damage, if you look at losses annually, they typically wind causes the most, you know, losses of any any natural hazards. Um and so, you know, you have the opportunity to be able to, to reduce some of those impacts. And it's and it's not just, you know, lip service either. I mean, I think a lot of the work that myself and other people do that are in wind engineering can have direct, direct applications to, let's say, building codes or building standards. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I've worked on in my career has ended up in things like ASC 7. Um, and so there's a real practical application to what it is you do. You're always, you're always working on something at least for me, that has direct application to uh, be able to, and maybe at some point down the line, mitigate the loss, or, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at kind of real, real scenarios, right? So kind of historically, wind engineering, you look at, I mean, a lot of it came from wind tunnel testing on, on structures. And so that's very highly practical. It's highly applicable. You're, you're typically looking at a structure that is going to be built, and you're looking at the wind effects associated with that. So, um, you know, there's you know, things like high rise buildings, which which a lot of structural engineers are interested in. You know, uh, it's probably tested in a wind tunnel. It wind wind and wind loading is probably a controlling load on that on that structure. And there's a lot of interesting things that the wind and the structure interact together to produce some pretty interesting effects. So I I think you know that that would be my pitch. I think to students is one that you can really still be a part of discovery like like big discoveries uh especially with with things that we don't don't know a lot about like tornadoes thunderstorms but then also that you know the work that you do is is highly applicable and you know you might be able to see you can see a real uh you can see the potential for impact when you start work on a particular topic yeah yeah i i would agree and, and i think even like just the you know me me being kind of more the uh you know, adventurous risk seeking type, like, man, the opportunity to go out with, with you or with, uh, you know, forest masters on a, you know, a hurricane hunt, you know, kind of thing like, Hey, we're actually going to plant sensors out in, you know, the path of this storm and be, you know, at a safe distance, but be there when it is happening or go out after a, a tornado and look at the damage and look at, see, and see the effects on structures. Um, you know, it's not just the really exciting computational science, which is, great and all but for for folks who are more like i don't want to be trapped in a cubicle the rest of my life like wind engineering is a great field to get into because you're not you don't necessarily have to be no for sure for sure yeah and it's a good point you know and my background is i you know i did my phd at texas tech they do a lot of field work uh you know and i was interested in it before that and even more so after after my my time there and so i think like you said you, you get to be on the ground you get to see potential real impacts uh, through damage surveys and things like that. And so I, 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 it's, it's usually things like damage surveys are, are typically what I use as a selling point to try to get undergraduates, especially interested in what we do, uh, in wind engineering, because, um, you know, it's an immediate impact. 
the data you collect can also you know have uh, have some significant benefit in a short amount of time. So completely completely agree. Uh, uh, it, you know, as a professor, sometimes it's maybe not as hands on as I'd like, or there's just there's other two there's too many things competing for for the time. But it, it's good to get the students involved, um, and that's another thing on the field side. They you know, it's they don't necessarily come in with experience in working in the field, working with things like sensors. Uh, you know, there's some co component of electrical engineering in that. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's good to expose students to and myself too to to different things like that that are that are important to to win engineering as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as we wrap up here, where can people follow along with you and, and your team and uh, learn more about wind engineering? Do you have anything interesting coming up that people might want to be involved in, especially hint, hint, if they happen to be near Champaign area in August? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we uh, we put on a, an NSF funded uh, tornado symposium called, called Thwarts. I won't get into the acronym, but we we started it in 2018. Uh, it's really a uh, just a, a really laid back conference for people who are interested in in tornadoes. Uh, and you don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be an atmospheric scientist. We want everybody who's working on the tornado problem. Things are, you know, it, it's very interdisciplinary tornadoes. It, it ranges from, again, the atmospheric science to the engineering, social science, economics, public policy. I mean, there's 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 just a whole host of things involved in in tornado research. And so, yeah, we, we, we'd really love to have you again. This is, we, we took a hiatus. We had it in 2018 and 2019 COVID shut us down in, in 2020 and really up until this summer. So August 14th and 15th, we'll have it here in Champaign. And again, yeah, it's, it's kind of late notice because we, we had to, we had to put it on, uh, we needed to put it on this year or else uh, we would, we would lose the remaining funding, but we hope to continue it beyond 2023. Uh, and I, I hope to plan it better in the future. But um, yeah, if you're interested in tornadoes or any really aspects of windstorms, uh, it would be great to great to have people in. And like I said, it, it's it's pretty laid back. Uh, the community's pretty laid back and and always welcoming of uh, uh, new people who may want to get into the field. Yeah, uh, I went to the one in 2019, and it was great. Um, you know, a lot different than than other other conferences where, yeah, it's 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 more about getting everybody kind of on the same page. Uh, the, and there was a lot of really great technical talks, but also policy and and all the all the mix of things that are needed to begin to chip away at the at the tornado problem. So it's it's a great conference if you're able to go. And uh, you know, Champagne's fantastic in August. <laughs> if you say so. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm a little biased, but you know, it's nice. It's not. It is. Not, it's better than everybody assumes that oh, it's just something to fly over. It's a bunch of cows and cornfields. And yes, there are a lot of cornfields, but an occasional bean field as well. That's uh, right. That's right. You know, and the University the of Illinois, which is a great institution, I'm sure you'd agree, was, uh, is right in the middle of all that. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I would certainly encourage people to attend. And, 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 you, and you nailed it. I mean, I think the, the key thing is getting everybody on the same page, right? To see if we can all work towards a, uh, a common goal uh, when it comes to, you know, reduction of impacts from from tornadoes. So I, I think that's the key thing. Uh, and, you know, the best way to do this, bring people together and, and get together and, and discuss and, you know, kind of continue that on year after year. Yeah. Well, we'll make sure to uh, to post a link to register for thwarts in the show notes for this episode and uh, and put it on our social channels as well. And hopefully we'll get some some people there. Um, I don't know about I'll be able to make the flight out this year, but uh, from, from Oregon, but I'll be there in spirit anyway. Um, and as always, it's great to see you, Frank, and looking forward to seeing the, what you and the team at, at Niche and at the Wind Engineering uh, Research Lab at Illinois uh, continue to do great work. So thanks for being here today, man. Yeah, appreciate appreciate it, Dan. Appreciate you taking the time. And uh, yeah, we hope to talk soon. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Design Safe Radio. Be sure to like and subscribe on whatever platform you happen to be listening to this on. It really helps people find our show. Thanks to our amazing sponsors, the National Science Foundation and the NARI Network Coordination Office, which is award number 2129782. Big thank you to Marty Lachance, our guest booker and topic researcher extraordinaire, and Raquel Ruiz, who is our video and audio editor. I'm your host and NARI Facility Scheduling and Operations Coordinator, Dan Zaner. We'll see you in the next episode. Until then, stay resilient.